Welcome to GB Mag's discussion on navigating LGBT issues as an international student. We're happy to have Arzu from the University of Liverpool, um, who recently spoke to us about coming to terms with her sexuality, and we have that story shared on our website. Um, and then we have Rob, who's here with us from the National Union of Students, and he's their LGBT officer. And then we have Dom from Student Minds, a charity which helps um, students navigate the stresses and strains of student life. I'm Victoria from GB Mag. For those of you who don't know, GB Mag is a weekly digital magazine for the international student community in the UK. Um, so over the past two weeks, we've been getting in personal stories and questions from our readers. And today our panelists um, will use their expertise and experience to answer some of these questions. So without further ado, um, let's get talking. So the first question uh, we have is from a 23 year old male who said, I was born in a small city where almost everyone feels negative towards gay people. Both of my parents work in the government and they have very traditional mindsets. They want me to get married soon and have kids, even though I've told them many times that I'm gay. I like men and I will never get married to a woman, nor will I ever have kids. Uh, my parents think I'm too young and ignorant and someday when I become more mature, I will change. But the truth is I'm already 23 years old I don't think my sexuality is a product of ignorance, and I'm positive that I like men. This is very difficult for me. How do I convince my parents? Um, so maybe, Arzu, we could start off with you kind of talking about your journey and kind of maybe share some insight that you might have on this. Um, your sexuality is definitely not a product of ignorance, and it's really hard to not forget that when you've been pressured into like marriage and having kids. and um your parents from their point of view i think they've probably never seen anyone get, like getting married to the same gender in their life or heard of it even uh, so it might come as a shock to them and they might also be thinking of the community around them who are also going to be hateful towards their son um so maybe it will be easier to like ask them for more time and break it down into little steps and just go through it really slowly with them, which can help. Try to explain to them that even if you do get married, you it, it's like um, you wouldn't be happy. Just like try to explain to them that it's not what you want. Maybe try to say that you want to focus on other things in life right now. Um, if they're not really comfortable talking about you being gay, yeah, and I think like this idea of time being incredibly powerful as well is really important. Um, so taking your time and like simply focusing on the knowledge that you aren't going to change and that your sexuality isn't going to change can be really empowering too. Yeah, absolutely. What's what's going to convince them in the end is your um, continued approach of living your life authentically as yourself, and they'll they'll come to terms with that eventually. So the next question we have is from a twenty six year old female. Uh, who asked, if you're born a man, but identify as a woman, but are attracted to men, how would you identify sexually? Um, so maybe Dom, you could start off on this, kind of talking about the social um, and legal aspects of this question. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely not a case that there's one signal, single answer, but uh, typically with sexuality, it's kind of the um, seen as an intersection with gender identity. So it's how you identify with your gender and then the gender you're kind of sexually attracted to. So if you identify as a woman and you're attracted to a man, um, you, you might identify as heterosexual. Um, if you identify as male, attracted to a man, you might identify as homosexual. Um, if you don't necessarily want to interlink your gender identity when talking about your sexuality, you can use terms like um, androphile, which means you're someone who is sexually attracted to a man, but doesn't kind of give any indication on what your gender identity is. Rob, is there any kind of support on campuses that you know of for people kind of struggling with this issue and how have the universities dealt with this to date? Um, so I think my first recommendation would be like see if your uni has an LGBT society um, because those can provide really, really vital like welfare support, social support, etc. Um, and generally can be a really good sort of first point of contact um, and they often have good links with the local community. So we'll be able to signpost you to like from sexual health services to counseling um, to the uni's like pa pastoral support, et cetera. Um, so I definitely recommend getting in touch with the LGBT society. Uh, and in terms of, I know this has been um, kind of a big 
topic in the news recently, um, bathrooms at universities. Uh, is there uh, now bathrooms for most, both genders at most universities or is this still um, something that we're moving towards? Yeah, so um, it's becoming increasingly common for students' unions in particular um, to have like, gender neutral toilets, um, which means that they can be accessed by a person regardless of their gender identity. Um, but in terms of the legalities of it, um, we have a system of self-identification in the UK, um, which essentially just means that a person, it's up to an individual person to decide which bathroom they use. So if you are a man, uh, regardless of what gender you were assigned at birth, that means you, you are welcome to use the male bathroom. So this is kind of open to all of you, but um, especially Arzu, because I know you've dealt with this yourself. Um, how do cultural differences come into play uh, when students are coming from maybe very different communities to university in the UK, how will this, how can this affect their experience of either coming out or um, identifying as gay at university in the UK? Um, I have noticed with many international students, like we tend to go to our like own nationality, like make friends with people from the same country. And if they're like cisgender and uh, heterosexual, um, it's hard for them to understand you because they're also grown up in the same mindset as your country. So like you, even if when you're here, you still can't be as open. And when you go to like an LGBT society or something, you might not find many people like from the same culture as you. So it'll be hard to relate to them as well because they don't understand like the intersectional struggles you got, you go through. So. Uh, that's a big like struggle because you don't sometimes you don't feel like you belong anywhere really but um how i dealt with that was like i kept my you know i'd started like educating my own friends about like my own sexuality and start telling them uh and they've been really supportive really and at the lgbt society um i started inviting like people i knew who were not straight from my culture into the society because they were also like kind of like debating whether to go or not so once you have like the same set of people in the society find them it's easy to try to like fit in and and, and i'm sure like everyone regardless of the culture also relates to some kind of struggle that you face um so it's good to like try to be open to as many people as you can so do either of you have any comments on how cultural differences might come into play? Um, are there different, is there different support for people um, at university and outside of university who might need more specialized support because of cultural differences? Yeah, so um, uh, there's a lot of like regional support for um, LGBT plus people of faith. Um, so something that I definitely recommend is like just literally going on Google and typing in, you know, like Muslim LGBT group in your area, etc. Um, because I think there is thankfully becoming a lot more like increased visibility for these groups um, and they and they definitely do exist. So I definitely recommend just doing some research and also approaching your society. In terms of um, you know, support from the water university community versus support from the LGBT plus community, did you feel you had a lot of support from the university as a whole and did you feel comfortable in the university as a whole or was it more that you felt comfortable in this safe space being the LGBT plus um, community and society? I think both because as a general student like it's good to know that the university supports you and if you face any kind of like problem or come across someone who's um, being rude to you you can like complain and having a safe space is like you know tr having people you can talk to and relate to and go out with safe in like safe manner so both are pretty important i think um so on to kind of a question about religion um uh, how do students balance kind of pride in religion with their sexuality um is this something that kind of can become an issue at times yeah I, th I think that when it comes to religion i think we really need to challenge the assumption that religious equals homophobic um and especially we're seeing um like pretty much there's branches of every religious group you can imagine that are actually not only just 
like not homophobic but are actively you know having a presence of pride and like forming lgbt plus groups of their own um so i think that's something that's a really good place to start in terms of understanding religion and lgbt yeah absolutely i do agree with that but uh there are also lots of challenges that lgbtq individuals can face growing up with some kind of um potential internalized um homophobia and some difficulties in what they were taught growing up and navigating that can be a challenge especially as if it does kind of mix in with cultural difficulties or um, religious beliefs that potentially um, are slightly ad- adversarial to um, being uh, homosexual. So, uh, for example, I, I was raised Catholic and I when I first started to come to terms with my sexuality, I initially did find it quite a struggle and I didn't find um, the Catholic community then that supportive. But just in the last few years, I've seen them change quite a lot since the gay marriage debate has happened in the country and um, a lot of people in, in the parish have kind of changed their views and been more tolerant. So there are definitely people within religious spaces that are definitely more tolerant and inclusive. I also like grew up very religious as a Hindu. Or, um, and when I also started coming in terms with my sexuality, um, I found it really hard to identify both as a Hindu and a lesbian at the same time, because I thought that both couldn't coexist because religion obviously hates me. Uh, but it really came down to like going on Google and trying to research what my religion actually says about homosexuality because what homophobes uh, around you try to do is like take one small thing from your religion and amp it up so much that it seems like it's more homophobic than it actually is. And religion is like a very personal thing and you can interpret it like how you want to and once you see the authentic texts or like original teachings and i think every religion all it teaches you is love and uh, love yourself love everyone else regardless of who they are and who they identify as so learning that like i slowly built up my religious identity up again next question uh, is from a 22 year old male who said, uh, I was very confused about my sexuality when I was young. During secondary school, I had dated both men and women. After I got into uni, uh, I confirmed to myself that I'm actually gay. I like men. And one summer I went home and drank with my parents. When I was a bit tipsy, I worked up the courage and came out to my mom. She burst into tears and said I was killing her. After that, she booked me in to consult with a psychologist who began treating my illness even though the psychologist had tried convincing her to accept my sexuality, she still thinks I need medication and treatment. I mean, this is a big question on kind of how one, how does one empower themselves to have obviously this kind of dialogue with your parents? And yeah, this is kind of open to everyone in the panel. What, what are your thoughts? Like conversion therapy is, you know, scientifically known to, to not work. Um, and so I think something that I would potentially recommend to this person if they feel safe doing so, Um, is sort of presenting that parent with the facts and saying, look, you know, look at these endless case studies. This conversion therapy doesn't work. Um, It's not going to turn me straight. It's not going to fix me, et cetera. Um, And so sort of trying to it's um, sort of have that conversation on their level. Um, And it might not work. You know, this person might just be determined that, you know, you're my child and and I want you to be happy and I want you to be straight and normal, et cetera. Um, But I think something I would recommend is looking into bringing up case studies and bringing up kind of the science and hard facts behind conversion therapy. Um, it's frustrating that that's an argument you, that you have to make in the first place, um, but sometimes it is what i found works. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like the psychologist is is um, slightly supportive given they're trying to convince the parents of um, being accepting of the child's um, sexuality and trying to help them understand that. So, Um, I suppose you can still use that space of having a psychologist of um, trying to explore what your options are, how you can breach those uh, conversations, um, continue having support if you feel that you need it, if you're having difficulties with a relationship and getting your family to accept you. Um, Perhaps keep asking your psychologist for that support, just to have that professional backup and getting that assurance to your family that that is normal and it's who you are and that's totally fine conversion therapy and medications are actually really harmful to your body Mm -hmm. and 
can make you go through a lot of emotional turmoil and physical turmoil because a lot of these medications include things like hormones which can be bad for you and maybe seeing how it harms you more than it might benefit her from her point of view might make her change her mind about it 